The Effective Executive by author Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker is one of the most well-respected management experts of our generation. Most of us believe that executives are heads of their companies in some way, like a chief executive. But Drucker believes that anyone whose time and decisions contribute to an organization's overall objective is an executive. This means that most of us are already executives, but are we effective ones? Inside the book, Drucker describes a series of principles and traits that most effective executives adhere to when making decisions and going about their daily work lives. Here we have broken down Drucker's book into six sections of key insights. Let's dive into them and discover what makes an effective executive. Part 1. Effectiveness can be learned. Drucker states that there are two kinds of workers, the knowledge worker and the manual worker. For the purposes of this book, we will focus on the knowledge worker. A knowledge worker is any worker in a modern organization that is expected through their knowledge to make decisions that have an impact on the performance of said institution. This person is an executive. Some are effective and some aren't, but all can become effective as there is nothing inherently special in the traits that the effective ones embody, and those are they know where their time goes, they focus on results and outward measurable contribution, they build on strengths, and they concentrate on very few, very important areas of which will make the greatest contribution to the organization in which they serve. And lastly, they make effective decisions. To accomplish effectiveness first requires a good grasp on where your time is spent. Which brings us to part two, know thy time. Effective executives don't start by measuring what they need to do. First, they measure their time and find out where most of it is spent. Thereafter, they eliminate the activities that put unproductive demands on their time. They ask themselves, what would happen if I didn't do this task at all? Or if someone else did it instead of me? If the outcome is acceptable, they will either stop doing that activity or delegate it to someone else. And they don't stop it themselves either. Effective executives often ask their subordinates what tasks they are given that uses their time but does not make a significant contribution to the whole. To an effective executive, contribution is everything, whether it's from themselves or from their subordinates. And that is what part three focuses on. The effective executive focuses on what he or she can contribute. They ask, what can I contribute that will dramatically impact the performance of the institute in which I serve? A great majority of executives are focused on process and not results, but to focus on contribution forces focus on results first and foremost. This unlocks the creative ability of their subordinates by giving them tasks and letting them achieve it in a way that they are able to do best. An executive who focuses on his own contribution and therefore his own results often influences those around him to do the same and thereby is able to raise the net standard of work within his organization. This also allows his subordinates to work by using their own strengths and not via process. Which leads us to part four, which is making strengths productive. Peter Drucker notes that effective executives focus on their strengths and the strengths of those around them. He further states that staffing your organization to avoid weakness results in mediocre performance. The problem is that most people do not know their strengths. Fortunately, Drucker provides a guide as to how you can discover your own strengths. He calls this feedback analysis, and the premise is to essentially run a scientific study on your performance of various tasks. You do this by setting a goal of a certain result within a given time period, say six to nine months. After the preset time has elapsed, you will then review if you've fallen short or exceeded this goal. If you've attempted to create a new system in your business, did you notice that your workflow and the workflow of your employees has improved or has it stifled productivity within your office? This can be applied to anything. Nine months ago, I set a goal for myself to be able to run six kilometers in under 35 minutes. And I've recently reviewed my performance at mid distance running and found that I am able to run six kilometers in under 25 minutes. Looking back at my rate of improvement, it was spectacular compared with the average. Through this experiment, I've discovered that I'm a good runner. 
This same concept can and must be applied to your life and thought through when staffing your organization. Next, effective executives put first things first. One secret to effectiveness is total concentration. The more one can concentrate time, effort and resources on any one task, the better that task can be performed. Effective executives are privy to this. That's why they put first things first. When planning out your day, you should do first the task that makes the highest contribution to your organization and slow off any task that gets in the way of you completing this. This intense focus on contribution mixed with the desire to make strengths productive means that most effective executives pursue opportunities and let others in their organizations focus on resolving the problems. This allows them to continually innovate and perpetuates the organization's growth. But not all opportunities are both the same, and this means that you will need to turn down a lot of good opportunities in pursuit of great ones. But how do you make this distinction? This brings us to the next part, which is effective decision making. Everybody makes decisions every day, some autonomously and others manually. There is already a lot of demand on the ordinary person to make decisions. That is why effective executives take time to make their decisions and only focus on decisions that are extremely important. This allows them to make very few but very important decisions. When making an important decision, effective executives first seek out the opinions of others before finalizing his or her viewpoints. This is done in the form of organized disagreement. Drucker states that decisions are only made well when based on the clash of conflicting views. Without disagreement, no decision shall be made. Drucker believes this because most outcomes are not black or white. So by allowing organized disagreement, you force out all the possible scenarios via the differing viewpoints and from there can base your decision from a more educated foundation. And that's The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker. This book is great if you are someone who is in charge of managing multiple working structures or a team of people and is a must read. Hey guys, thank you for watching this week's video. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and smashing the like button as it will allow us to continue producing these videos and perhaps begin producing them on a more frequent basis. Till next time, bye.